Guess who's back? Back again. Gilson's back. But don't tell a friend. Don't tell your friends. Don't tell your family. Don't tell anyone. Because you don't need to inflict knowledge of Gilson B. Pontus on even your worst enemies. That's right. We're back with Gilson B. Pontus, my favourite game developer, if I'm honest. I mean, at this point, I think I've just surrendered to the sweet, happy madness of it all, you know? Uh, Gilson B. Pontus, legendary game designer, once a year in the first quarter of every year, for years, Gilson B. Pontus has put out a game. And that's all, that's all Gilson seems to do, is put out a game a year. And it's always shit. It's always the same thing, more or less. It's, it's you are a person with a sword. You walk or ride, or if you're lucky, you swim a really long distance and then get killed in one hit by some rando monster. And that's it. That's it. I cannot emphasize enough how it's that. It's as that as it's is. It's literally that's it. It, <laughs> so he's, what upsets me about this one is it's worse than last year's. I know I said they're all the same, but it's like Dynasty Warriors. If you're a big enough fan, if you're a big enough admirer, let's face it, a big enough romantic lover of the games, you can pick out the differences. Just as a Madden fan would probably be able to tell you, you know, what goes on in that insipid game for children. Oh, fuck. Had the volume right up when I started looking back at the footage. Um, sometimes as I uh, give you my thoughts, I like to have the footage playing as well. Give me a sense of, of inspiration. <laughs> because yeah, that's an appropriate word to use while you're looking at... Oh God, what's this one called again? Oh God, uh, Taisho Gun, The Rise of Emperor. How's that? A poetic title to go alongside the greats of this series? Is it a series or a, do you think it's individual IP? I guess it is because they always come up with a big sort of story write-up. Let's do that. In, in the 12th century of the Halo period, internal tensions arise as the clan's power grows when mysterious supernatural phenomena occurs. Over the years, two powerful clans have fought over fierce conflicts. One of them, led by the legendary shogun Hojo Takimasa, won a great and important victory over other enemies. However, regional leaders continue to have great power and influence. Mm -hmm. They form a secret alliance with the occult army to defeat and assassinate the legendary general and take his post from him as army chief. However, after the assassination, he put all his military power into the hands of his daughter, Hojo Masako. The war with enemies Masako begins to soon to defeat all the enemy demons of land. Turns out that was just really long and boring. Normally they're, you know, a, like spicier than that. S sorry, let's sort of sped it up at the end. Oh, and then a Metacritic review. Ah ha 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 ha! Gilson B. Pontus, the worst developer on PlayStation, offers up yet another bad game to be roundly mocked. To be warned, this is bad, very, very bad. It should only be purchased as a joke. Yep, there's no targeting. You can't. I, I, I tried every button and there was no targeting. When you start a chain of attacks, you just go forward. And I still haven't worked my head around how the camera and the movement interact. It just goes squiffy. It goes weird. And the enemies seem to have no problem finding you, like with their swings. But you run the risk constantly of swinging past them and having to stop and recenter yourself. And you've got a kind of sluggish sort of dodge 
and they, they can really swing quick sometimes. But if you really spam the dodge, you can avoid their attacks pretty much all the time. But once you start attacking, you're completely open and you can just go past them. And it's awful. And it's awful. I'll tell you one thing, and I've not given Gilson enough credit for this in the past. These games go ham on the controller speaker, and I do like controller speaker gimmickry. Check it out though, for God's sake. Gilson B. Pontus doesn't skimp on the noises coming out the controller. Check this out. Bird, horse, right? Sheath on sheath, right? All right, hang on, let me uh, run toward uh, enemy and then you can hear what happens, what the game does to you when it kills you in one fucking hit. Oh, there's quite, quite a bit of detritus under there, isn't there? Anyway, hang on. Oh, it's gone far away on the screen. It won't be worth it. That's it, go navigate. God, controlling this thing is the worst. Well, I mean, on one hand, it laughs. The game laughs. Thinks it's funny what it does to you. Fucking Gilson B. Ponta. Imagine a milky red raw anus swollen, weeping. Uh, I mean, that's that's what it. Ugh. Actually, I made myself feel ill with that. But that's what it feels like to control the fucking horse in this game. It makes my skin crawl. There are certain levels of bad controls that make me feel physically uncomfortable. Just with the controller in my hand, and, and I don't mean it makes my hands hurt, I mean it makes me uncomfortable in the way itchy clothes would make one feel. Imagine a sweater that's coarse and itchy and smells like the corpse you robbed it from, with really long sleeves that go past your hands, and a design seemingly for a centipede with human arms. Oh, a human centipede. Well, regardless, the point is, it goes down past your feet, and that's what it's like to move this horse in this game, and that fucking PlayStation Move game, the shooter that Namco Bandai crapped out, was part of it was part of an arcade series, but I've forgotten the bloody name now. It was fucking horrible. But it had Dreadstorm Pirates on it, which is fucking good. Unlike Taishogun, Rise of Emperor, which is a bad game and it feels bad to play when you play it, so it's not good. And it's, there's something of a retro throwback to Gilson's early work. I think that maybe Gilson needs to make some better games before he starts looking back at his early shitter work and thinking, oh, you know what, I had a creative spark then. What was that Transformer that sparked? I found a, a, a monster bot. And, and I think that's what it was, but I couldn't find the one that I, like, remember. It was like a yellow and pink bird thing. Looked a bit like, I guess, the, the chicken leg things from Golden Axe, if I recall correctly. And it had wheels and sparks would fly out of its mouth. You know, I might do a video series on, you know, just playing with tap. Like, like the Boglin Watch stuff, but expand it out so I can fiddle with my mad balls on camera. Why does Gilson do it? Like, diligently, quietly, just the one game, annually, Gilson's do it once a year. <laughs> Gil, do I have permission to put that on a shirt? I've never, I've never exchanged words with Gilson. I'd love to sit down with Gilson B. Pontus one day and just ask what the fucking deal is with any of it. Why are the games being made? Why is it once a year? Why do they cost between 10 and $20? And how and why, again, do they get on the PlayStation 4? Oh, 
And will we get any PlayStation 5 ones in future? I'd love to see a next-gen step up. Plus, you can't even swim in this one, in Taisha Gun. You can look at the rabbits and the foxes and that, but you can't fight them, interact with them in any real way. It's just, once you get to the edge of a map, it's just that you can't fall off it. There's no water you can walk on. Walking on water in the, the first one was good, but this one is, is shit. It's hit an invisible wall and you can't swim and there's no nothing. It's just skeleton hit you and then big monster. But the, the whole dual shock noise coming out of it's pretty good, so. 10 on 10.